Hi there, this is Juan with LGG Media and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the Facebook conversion APIs so you can feed offline conversions that happen outside of your website back to Facebook and you can essentially train your pixel to be smarter this way. So what you're going to do is head over to your Facebook business manager, head over to the event manager settings, click on your pixel, click on settings. I'm going to have you do two things here. First thing you're going to do is uh, copy your Facebook pixel ID here. Second thing is you're going to need to get a access token. I'm going to show you mine here. I'm going to reset all of this. Therefore, <laughs> nobody's going to be able to use my, my dummy account here to try anything. But anyway, so save your pixel ID and save your token aside. Next thing you're going to do is we're going to head over to Facebook payload helper and we're going to build essentially the payload of what we want to send back to Facebook. So what I did here is I'm going to be sending Facebook a purchase event. The time here is a dummy. It's a filler. Here's the structure of the payload. So I want to send a purchase event. The time is going to be in this format. I'll show you afterwards how to get to that format. Action source is going to be system generated because it's going to be generated from our CRM system. The event ID not all CRM systems have the ability to capture that, so I'm going to leave that as null. If you have the ability to add a, an event ID, you can so rightfully put it in these in the as a parameter. And lastly, uh, you have your event source URL, so I'm, I'm going to put here LGG Media. This I'm going to leave blank. We we'll leave this blank. IP address, if you can map it, great. If not, just just leave it as optional. So my first name, last name, I want to capture one at test.com. And then my phone number is going to be 222-333-4444. So keep in mind, this is the format that we're going to have to build the payload when we push the data back to Facebook. Uh, keep in mind, this data has to be hashed. So when we hash it, it's going to look something like this. Then uh, click ID is something I also want to have available in here. So if you're capturing the F click, you can uh, you can always uh, just type here. Here goes the Facebook click ID. Between those brackets is when you're going to have to put it. So remember, this is just a payload. We're just building the structure of the data we're going to send to Facebook. The uh, You can add any other parameters in here. So if you are collecting the city, country, gender of your lead, you can do so rightfully here. I try to keep it as simple as possible. Just contact information, phone number, and then the ability to put the IP address and the, and the Facebook click ID are also important, but I don't necessarily always have it captured through the CRM system, through all, the, all of my client's CRM systems. So in this case, I'm going to show you how to do it without it. If you're capturing it, you can always uh, plug it in. But anyway, custom, there are parameters here. So you need to add uh, currency. So if you're, if you're pushing data in, in US dollars, you would have USD. If you're doing it in Canadian dollars, you just have to use the, the, the correct uh, the correct structure here per se and then the value is how much money you want to have make that that purchase event worth so in my case it's 125 dollars so this is the payload we're going to be using now the real question is how do you we now how do we now make sure that our data gets pushed in this format back to facebook as a conversion for this i utilize a system called Pavli connect and uh, let me just share my other screen momentarily so this is Pavli Connect. I'm going to make a shareable link for anyone that wants to use the system. I'm going to attach this at the bottom of the description of the YouTube video and uh, and you can essentially just copy it and uh, import it into your Pavli account. So you can create the exact same workflow I'm showing you right now. So, so for those of you who've never used Pavli, essentially this allows us to receive data through a webhook. 
you know know what well, if you don't know what webhooks are, uh, it's essentially how applications talk to each other and how they send data to each other. So if my CRM system has the ability to create a webhook, whenever there's a purchase, I can say, okay, I want to send a webhook to Pavli where the currency is laid out, the email, the first name, last name, the phone, and the value of the conversion is sent back to Pavli. Once Pavli captures it, what it's going to do next, and remember, uh, we want to take the first name, so we need to hash the data. So we use a data transformer by Pavli. So we want to take the first name and hash this out. So this is the data that we're going to be sending back to Facebook. And we're going to do the same thing for the last name. And we're going to do the same thing for the email. And the same thing for the and, and for the phone number, we need to put it in a format where there's no dashes or parentheses. So we want to be able to plug in the phone here. We're going to use the formatting function in Pavli and we're going to extract the number so only the numbers come out. In this case, the number was clean, but in the event that you have any formatting, uh, this will remove all the formatting. So then we would map the result from this step here. We would map it into the data transformer so we can hash out the phone number. Once the data, once those main data points are hashed, we, need, we then need to get the current date and time. So this is what we use. We just wanna, we don't necessarily need the exact minute or hour, so I'm using just the, uh, we're just getting the date, month, and year. Oh, never mind. no, we're actually getting the one, the way I built it here is I built it so we have the date and time. So once that's done, I'll show you here, it's gonna spit out the current date and time here in your local ter time. So then we need to convert this time into a, the format that Facebook was asking for. And that, that the format they use is called timestamp. So we map out the this result here. We put it in the time zone that we want. We want we put it in the formatting that Facebook wants. And then we set the time zone that we want this to, to happen in, per se. So once that happens, we click on save and send. The request is gonna spit out the date and time in this weird format <laughs> to use. So the last step is essentially sending the conversion back to Facebook after the data has been processed. So here's how we do it. So we create an API event. We are posting data, meaning we're pushing data into Facebook. We're using the version of the Pixel 10.0. Just copy everything the same that you see here. So where it says insert Pixel ID here, Here's where you're going to have your pixel ID. And then payload type, we're doing a JSON event. We're going to keep this as no, authentication, no. We're going to set parameters. You're going to have a label called data and then the second label called access token. So the access token is the data that you pull from your original settings. If you can remember. Now the data itself, here's where this thing goes, this payload, which I already had set up here. So you can see that, let me, you can see that we have the name of the event and the format is a bit screwed up, but you can see here that the event name is purchase. The event time is the value that we mapped the action source is system generated. The event ID, if you have it, if you're mapping it from the uh, CRM system to Pavli, you should be able to then map it here. I don't have any, so mine stays at no. Where the, uh, the event is being generated, so I put my website here, but if you wanna be more specific, you can say your CRM systems URL, but I like to just keep it simple unless I have multiple applications and multiple systems, multiple referral websites, you never know. Uh, and then user data, we have the first name, 
So we hash, so the hashed value is what we map here first. Uh, last name, we map the second hashed value that we generated on step number three. And this is between brackets. Be very careful of that. Email, same thing, then phone. And then the Facebook click ID, if you have the value here, uh, put it. If, not, if you don't have it available, then just leave it blank. And then as far as custom data, with currency, we're gonna push our conversion in Canadian dollars. So you can either map it. So if you have multiple uh, purchase events in multiple currencies, you can always map it. Uh, you can map this field so it's dynamic. If you if it's all in the same currency, you can just put like USD. Oops, excuse me. You can put CAD or you can hard code it so it's USD. Up to you. In my case, I'm just gonna keep it in Canadian dollars. And then the value, it can either be dynamic if you have multiple different purchase events that could occur inside of your inside of your CRM system. But if you have one, it's always the same purchase event that you have, you can put, I don't know, this conversion is worth like 1500 bucks. And that's it. And you just push the conversion out. Right now, you should see that the event receive is one and the trace ID is this. So what's gonna happen is the event is gonna be sent to Facebook here, and it's eventually, after some time, it's gonna show up in the overview as, a, as, as an event that took place. Uh, it's as simple as that. If you don't see the event, if it gives you an error for, for if you say, for example, if you didn't do this step here, if you're doing a test where the timestamp is too old, so if it's older than a few days, what may occur is Facebook will say, hey, the conversion took place too long ago, so we can't actually use it to train our pixel anymore. So it cannot count it. It's, it's, it's useless to the system. So be aware of that error. It does, it doesn't, it does not necessarily mean that the, there's something wrong with the setup, but rather it's just that the conversion that you're testing is old. So you wanna test this with a one fresh uh, event. So anyway, to recap the whole thing from the top, so remember, to set up the conversion API, you go, to, you go to your event manager on Facebook, head over to settings, save your pixel ID, then you uh, save your, your access token, then you go to your payload, create your payload, if you wanna do this from scratch. If you're using uh, the share link I gave you there on Pavli under the, the description, you don't need to do this part, you can just copy it will already be created here for you inside of Pavli. and uh yeah and then once uh once once you have access to Pavli, essentially you need to create a webhook to receive you need to tie this to your crm system so whenever something happens in your crm system the data is pushed into Pavli. Pavli receives the data in a specific format and then you just go through each step here you hash out the first name last name email phone number as I did here. And lastly, you get the time stamp or the moment that it just, that the conversion just took place in. That gets converted and hashed out in the correct format. And lastly, you, you create an API event which pushes the data to Facebook. Here is the endpoint. Remember, this is, the, this is where you plug in your pixel ID. Remember, it's version 10.0. Copy everything to a T. Here's where you put your your payload. I already have it here preset it for you guys to use. Uh, the access token is another level. So if you wanna add more events, more, uh, more parameters, you can do so here, but you already need this too, the data and then the access token. And then that's it, simple as that. Uh, now, if you found this too hard, uh, my company, uh, we specialize in in running ads and setting up conversion events for companies so to help them maximize the revenue and profitability that they generate from ads. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to either comment below or uh, just head over to lgg.media forward slash contact and just drop us an inquiry and we'll be more than happy to assist you with your setup. So that's it, 15 minutes and uh, yeah, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Take care.